All right, so welcome. We are from the Arapaho Libraries. We're the teen librarians, and we're going to talk today about some great narrative nonfiction titles that if you are interested, you might check out from the library. So my name is Bridget. We have Catherine and Lauren, and the three of us are going to tell you about several different books today. I'll go ahead and start. And the first book I want to talk about is called Endurance by Scott Kelly. This one is a memoir by a man who's an astronaut, and he is also one of the people who spent a year living in space on the International Space Station. He's also an identical twin. He's a very fascinating life. And this book is his story of what it's like to become an astronaut, not only an astronaut, but what it's like to live in space for an extended period and what it took to kind of get there. My favorite part of this book is that he talks a lot about the fact that he was a terrible student. He really disliked school when he was in elementary, middle school, high school. He didn't like it at all. He was really bad at it. He didn't see why it was necessary. He was frustrated by it. And he talks about finding the idea of space flight and being a pilot and how that for him was something that's so motivating that he tried to really work and change his school stuff around because he wanted to do this with his life. So if you're someone who perhaps like me when I was younger struggles sometimes with school and you're kind of like, <laughs> I could never be an astronaut because I always hear about how sciencey and how much school you need for that. You should definitely read this. Or if you're somebody who really is curious about things like robotics in space, if you want to know what it's like to be an identical twin when both of you are astronauts, they're both astronauts, you guys. Uh, fascinating story. I really enjoyed it. It's kind of funny, has a great audiobook. So if you like space, I think you should give Endurance a try. My first recommendation is Never Caught by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. It is um, set during the early days of America, and it is about Ona Judge. She was the slave of George Washington and Martha Washington. She actually belonged to Martha Washington at the time, and um, she was born into slavery and grew up. And she this story is fascinating because it is her experience growing up under slavery, and then making the decision to run away uh, when she was a teenager because she was going to be given as a wedding gift to Martha Washington's granddaughter. And she decided she had had enough. She ran away and had to live in hiding for the rest of her life because, interestingly, Martha and George Washington hunted her relentlessly for the rest of her life. And so well into adulthood, into her um, older age, she had to remain in hiding because they would send slave hunters. And so she lived in Maine for the rest of her life. And this is really her story and experience. The book is fascinating. Um, it's based on a series of interviews that she gave shortly before she died, as well as other like letters and transcripts and things that the author found. Um, it's just a really interesting look inside of our early history um, and some of the kind of questionable things that some of our founding fathers did. I highly recommend it. There is, um, so the one I'm recommending is the Young Readers Edition. There's also an adult version. It really works either one. They work really well for anyone and it's super fascinating. The first one I'm going to talk about is called Torpedoed, and it is set in World War II, but it's a different part of World War II than I knew anything about. It is set in England, and it's September 1940, and in England, and probably many countries, they were sending children to other countries where there wasn't war while it was taking place to kind of protect them. So this one, Torpedo, is specifically about the... Uh, SS um, City of Ben Ayers, and they were going to Canada from England and along the way they were escorted there's escorted ships that would help them across the the sea just to make sure nothing happened and what happened afterwards was they did end up getting torpedoed. Uh, one of my favorite parts is you get to see pictures of what it was like inside the boat you get to see pictures of the children that were there uh, and all the different aspects of what it was like before the torpedo hit and then after it definitely turns into a survival story as you can imagine very quickly because they still were further away from Canada but didn't realize it uh, so it does get very tense um, it, it does talk about World War II but mostly about the boat and the children that were on it and kind of the stories of where they came from I really enjoyed that you get to know them and kind of see what happened once it was hit and kind of from there, um, again, that's torpedoed. I highly recommend it. If you like World War II, survival, any of those, it's, it's fascinating. 
So my next choice is one that's a little bit, a little more recent than World War II, a little bit. This one is called 42 is not just a number and it's about Jackie Robinson. And if you aren't familiar, Jackie Robinson is well known primarily because he was the first black player in the major leagues um, in the baseball major leagues and his number was 42 um, and on his jersey. And so this is sort of his story as from like a kid growing up and playing baseball. And what I really found so interesting about this is even if you think you have heard about him and you know about him, I liked this story because it tells you a lot of the details about him before he was a famous baseball player. And I feel like I didn't know that stuff. So there's things, he was an exceptional athlete, not just at baseball, but he was really exceptional. He played basketball and football. He kind of idolized um, his older, he had an older brother who he was very fascinated by and it really kind of idolized as far as sports go. And he was also in the military for a time. And this is sort of his story of what it was like to become sort of the first person to break the color line in Major League Baseball and all of the things that he had to put up with. There's some really horrific stuff that he had to deal with. But I thought it was so interesting because if you have followed the news a lot this summer or if you are up on current events around protests around Black Lives Matter and around police brutality in our country, you might notice that there are a lot of famous athletes today who are also kind of um, using their position as a famous athlete, athlete to start conversations or to talk about these issues that are affecting their communities. And so this book, while it's obviously set in in the past, I think is something you might be interested in or you might find really relevant if you're curious about some of these issues from our history that kind of overlap with stuff going on today. Plus, if you like baseball, honestly, there's tons of baseball details in this one. So give it a try. Awesome. I've read a few books by his daughter. She writes books about him now that are fiction. Um, if you like that one, maybe look up the books his daughter has written. They're a lot of fun. Um, so my next one is Rising Water by Mark Aronson, and we're coming way back, way more recent in time. Um, this actually follows events that happened just two years ago in 2018. If you remember, you may remember seeing in the news um, about the soccer team in Thailand, the boys soccer team that got trapped in a cave during this, the summer flooding. So in June 2018, 12 boys and their coaches from the soccer team were exploring these caves after a match and the, a flash flood came and they got trapped. And this book is about how the world essentially came together to rescue them. I will also say this book was like all of my worst nightmares because I have extreme fear of being trapped um, and claustrophobia. And that's essentially what this entire book is. It talks about the experience of the boys, uh, what they had to do to survive because they were thinking they were going in for like maybe an hour of cave exploration and they were trapped in there for three days with no food, no drinkable water, um, almost nothing. So they were struggling to survive in that way. And the water was getting higher and higher. There was no way to get out of this cave. Um, and then it also tells the story of their rescue efforts. And so particularly there were a few Navy SEALs um, and other expert divers who went in. And if you can imagine, diving is dangerous at the best of times, but when you are diving in pitch black caves, it's even more dangerous. There was actually one Navy SEAL that lost his life um, trying to plant um, some air tanks for people. But this is the story of how they were rescued. And it was it is very intense, but it is so interesting. I highly recommend it. It moves super quick um, when you're reading it. It is, I wouldn't call it fun, but it is really interesting. <laughs> And the next one I'm talking about is The Disappearing Spoon. And so this one is a little bit more lighthearted, I would say, than other ones we've talked about already. And it's how the periodic table was created. So what I really enjoyed is how you got to see how the elements were found and discovered, figured out what they did and how they interacted with each other or did not. There's a lot of elements that obviously don't play along well together. So you get to see how it was formed, the periodic table itself and elements, how they were presented in different board meetings and things like that to be, because you had to prove that it was a new element and prove what it could do and things like that, which I did not know um, was something that you had to do to, to get on the periodic table. One of my favorite parts is they have an oops page. So things that we are used to like sticky notes and slinkies, those were actually accidents. And it kind of talks about 
what it was before and what the discovery was and kind of connects that together. I really found it entertaining how it came to be because it's in most science rooms. It's used in science, obviously, all the time and kind of how it got stacked together and arranged the way it was. It was a lot of reprints, a lot of discoveries, a lot of things like that. So if you want a really good science um, narrative nonfiction, Disappearing Spoon is awesome. Again, it, this one is the Young Readers Edition. Uh, you can read either one just fine. I just really enjoyed the Young Readers Edition. So my last one that I wanted to talk about is called Deadly Aim, and it's about the full title um, is the Civil War story of Michigan's Anishinaabe sharpshooters. That's the full title. And it is, if you like, learning about war history, this is a really good choice. And it follows Company K during the Civil War, which is made up of pretty much all Native American soldiers, um, specifically Anishinaabe soldiers from Michigan. And they were recruited partly because they were such good shots. Um, a lot of their sort of the way they supported themselves involved hunting and various things. And they were very, very good um, at their aim was impeccable. And so for a long time, um, people that the American government at the time referred to as colored. So this would include African Americans, it would include um, First Nations people were not considered um, they were not someone that either side of the government wanted to recruit to fight on in the armies. They felt that they were somehow less reliable. So a lot of racism is what was powering these decisions. But at one point, the Union soldiers were really needing more troops. And these troops in particular, these men were really, really good at what they did. So Company K was formed where the whole company was, was a uh, made up of soldiers who weren't white. And they this follows their story through the war. It talks about why they might enlist and why they would be considering fighting um, at all in the Civil War. It talks about what they did as far as training. It talks about what the battles were like. My one heads up on this book is that it is gives you all of the details. So this is the Civil War and lots of people lost limbs. There were all sorts of very gory things that happened. A lot of the men that you meet and learn about in the story did not make it out. So know that if you like those details, those kind of war gory details, this book has lots of them. It's really interesting and it tells you what happens after the war. So it's a piece of Civil War history that's focused kind of on something you might not know about, a piece of history you might not be aware of. So I found it really interesting. And if you get the book book, there's all sorts of maps and sort of pictures, all sorts of things, which is really great. And if you listen to the audio, they have a wonderful reader. So you've got multiple options. And if you like war history, this one would be probably right up your alley. My last one is another one that reads more like an adventure novel than a nonfiction book. It's Born to Fly by Steve Shankin. And it I knew nothing about this when I first started reading it, but it was fascinating. So it is about the first women's air race across America. So in the early days of flying, this is like 1929, when planes were still super dangerous, actually, and really questionable in their, I don't know how sound they were. They, these air races were really common because it was, you couldn't really fly cross country or across the ocean in the same way that you could now without stopping. And so they would set up these races to see who could get across fastest. Um, and this is the story of the first one. There are some familiar figures like Amelia Earhart pr um, participated in this. Marvel Crossan, who was another early woman in flight. Um, Eleanor Smith, who was only 17 years old when she competed in this race. But what is so fascinating is that this race, not only is it interesting if you like flying um, or airplanes, but it was riddled with all kinds of sabotage and really questionable things that were happening. There was someone who was um, sabotaging the women's planes at night and there are stories about how they would um their landing gear wouldn't come down or only one wheel would come down and they had to land on a single wheel an airplane <laughs> um or you know just some of the different things that were happening they were um it was an endurance race so essentially they would fly for 12 14 16 hours at a time and it just wasn't super safe um and so it was really interesting just this danger and pulse pounding are they going to survive 
they don't all survive just as a heads up. Some women did die in this race, so you know that, but it is a really interesting look at an early part of our history, especially early flight, um, which is hard to believe, but was less than 100 years ago that we started flying. So that is Born to Fly. Awesome. My last one is a totally different kind of race. It's uh, the Electric War, and it is the race to see who first kind of created electricity that could be kind of nationwide or even citywide. Uh, it's hard to imagine it only being in certain areas, certain pockets, very limited in time, uh, but it follows Thomas Edison, who's the inventor of direct current, and Nikola Tesla and George uh, Westinghouse, who are inventors of alternating current. And they were really racing, those three were really racing to be the first to be able to say, I lit this street, the street lights. Um, and having power that maintained, electricity that maintained. We all take advantage of the electricity that we had, but it came from somewhere. And this story really breaks it down and how complicated it was and how cutthroat it was very much. They were at each other trying to kind of step over each other on the ladder, trying to get to be the first one there. Uh, so I really like hearing about the creation and how it came about. It's It definitely was a rough one. You get to know the people and how they weren't always nice guys, um, for sure, trying to be the first one to get, get the electricity pumping. Uh, so if you want to kind of know where all of that came from, I really found it fascinating, kind of what was happening during that time to get that happening. So hopefully today you heard about something that strikes your interest and you might be interested in trying. You can always check out these books from the Arapaho libraries if you would like to. We've got them in ebook format, audio formats, book formats, whichever you like, or you can find them somewhere else too. We hope you had a good time watching us today and we will hopefully be back in the future with more suggestions. Bye. Thank you.